Hello, welcome to the Judge Ben Show. My name is Ben Joseph. I'm a retired Superior Court judge here in Vermont. And this is a program in which I interview guests about uh, legal issues and uh, what's going on in the judicial system in our state. Today, my guest is Howard Van Bentuysen, uh, who is now also a retired Superior Court judge, having retired earlier this month. And um, I, I should say that I've known Howard for years and he's a great friend and he's been a great judge. But I, and I'm thanking him for coming on here today to talk about how things have, have gone and how things are going. So Howard, how, how, how long were you on the bench? How long were you a judge? Ben, I was on the bench for about 24 years. Uh, I was appointed by uh, Howard Dean in 1997. Wow, yeah. I was appointed by Howard Dean in 1998, you know? Yep, yeah. he came right after me. Right after you, yeah, well, he was, uh, I was, I was just, I, after my, on my 10th anniversary, I sent him a, th a long thank you note because it was really, <laughs> I thought it was a great job. Um, so where did you work before you were appointed? Well, before I was on the bench, I was in private practice of law up in St. Albans uh, right. for about three years. And before that, I had been Franklin County State's attorney, as you know, for about 10 years. Yeah, and my, my, my wife was one of your workers. One of my best hires ever. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm. I'm. Was great. Yeah, she, that's no exaggeration. She was terrific. She was terrific, and she did nothing but. Uh, I remember there was a three-year period where she was doing sex assault and domestic violence. Yeah. Oof, tough, tough, those, tough, tough. Those tough, are tough. very tough dockets. You know, she handled them uh, brilliantly and with great empathy, which is, you know, those are two qualities you need for those dockets. Yeah. Well, did you like being a judge? I love being a judge. Uh, I think it's the best job, but with all due respect to Chief Justice Ryber and his associates, uh, I think trial judge is the best job in the state of Vermont. Well, I'm, I'm sure it was the best job I ever had. I really, to this day, I miss it. You know, I, I'm, well, you know, 24 years, boy, you paid your dues. You really did. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, is there anything you didn't like about being a judge? Well, you know, Ben, after a while, as you know, the traveling gets to you because all of Vermont's trial judges rotate uh, almost on an annual basis. Uh, most of us travel at least an hour. Sometimes, as you know, it's an hour and a half or more one way to get to your duty station, your court. And uh, frankly, in the last few years, I, I began to tire of two hours a day in the uh, in the car. I mean, VPR is entertaining, but uh, uh, <laughs> 10 hours a day or 10 hours a week might be uh, a little over. I remember one of my first assignments was I was living in North Hero and I was assigned to Rutland. <laughs> so yeah. some of that was I, I was staying in a motel during most of the week and it was hard. That was yeah. tough. That's yeah. rough. I, it was about an hour and a quarter for me to go from my house to uh, Newport when I lived in Fairfax. And wow. you know, that adds up, especially when you have kids, you have a family, you've got other responsibilities. And you're going up and down the mountains there, right? Going up and down the mountains. Uh, yeah. uh, Judge Rangel's doing that. Uh, I believe now he goes over the mountain to uh, Newport from Georgia. Wow. Well, um, what effect has the... Uh, the pandemic had on the judge job for the last year? Uh, well, you know, just as in every walk of life, really, uh, the, the pandemic has radically changed the nature of the job. Uh, one of the things I love about the job or loved about the job is the people contact, seeing the people in the courtroom, having uh, litigants, defendants, lawyers, staff in the courtroom. And of course, uh, as of uh, almost 13 months ago now, we stopped all of that almost like uh, on a dime. Uh, and so uh, from going to, a, from a very busy docket, a very people oriented job, uh, we all suddenly transitioned eventually in the, in the summer to this uh, talking head world that, that we're in now, the Zoom, Teams, WebEx sort of thing. Uh, and it loses a lot, uh, I'm afraid, when you're having to talk to people through a screen like this. Uh, especially when people are having the worst day of their lives, uh, you know, having a divorce, having a, a 
case in juvenile court involving one of their children uh, being involved in a relief from abuse matter, being a witness or a defendant in a criminal matter. Uh, the, uh, one of the things I think Vermont judges do well is the people aspect of managing their jobs. Well, did you, were you, were you active in all three divisions of the Superior Court? I so was, uh, yeah, over the 24 years I've sat uh, in every, uh, Every division of the court, I uh, sat from Essex County over to Grand Isle and all of the counties in between. Uh, I've been down to Barrie a few times. And so I, I've been all over the northern half of the state uh, mm -hmm. sitting in all of the divisions, which is one of the things I think you may remember fondly about the job, which is the variety that you get. Uh, oh, I, absolutely. It's, it really is. That, that was one of the, that was the best job I ever had. The variety of the work and the responsibility, frankly, that you right. had to. Right. Had to you know, ben, uh, a lot of states have uh, judges who are elected and mm -hmm. they're elected into one docket. And so right. they spend their whole career uh, in one docket, in one division, uh, and uh, their their career is defined by how many times they can be reelected. Yeah. In Vermont, every trial judges, with the exception of our two environmental judges, uh, every judge is presumed to be uh, able to sit with equal fairness and effectiveness in all the divisions, whether it's civil, criminal, family, juvenile, appeals from lower courts like the probate courts uh, and you know over the years uh, uh, we've all developed our favorite dockets right but uh, nevertheless uh, in any given year any one of Vermont superior judges could be assigned to uh, a different docket in a different county and that happens it's part of our rotation. Well I, I gather for the last year you haven't done any jury trials. No, we haven't. And that's another thing that I miss uh, very much. Uh, we stopped during jury trials, uh, you know, in the month preceding the uh, pandemic really taking root in Vermont and across the country. And uh, the Supreme Court and uh, a committee or two of the Supreme Court have been really trying hard to figure out how we do jury trials in a pandemic environment with social distancing, mask requirements, plexiglass partitions in the courtrooms. Uh, you saw, if you saw the recent Chauvin trial out uh, in the Midwest, uh, the jurors were all seated six feet apart. Uh, there was plexiglass around the witnesses and around the judge and so forth. Uh, but in Vermont, we don't have very many courtrooms that are big enough to allow to say. Do that. Yeah, no, so, You need uh, an auditorium. <laughs> well, do you, do you miss doing the jury trials, Howard? I do, yeah. That's one of the things I always enjoyed. Uh, yeah. uh, that's really the hallmark of our criminal justice system is allowing, in Vermont, I think, a real jury of your peers to decide whether the state has proven its case. And the judge, of course, is the umpire to make sure that everything's done fairly to everyone, uh, the defendant, the victims, the public, uh, make sure the lawyers are following the rules. And yeah, I do miss the jury work. And I'm hoping that as a senior judge, I'll get to do some of that as we try to come to grips with a very, very large backlog. Well, yeah, yeah, so that's, and that's gonna really be a challenge. I, and I think, well, I, I just don't know how that how that's going to turn out. I just hope that I hope the legislature provides the resources that will be necessary to do that. Well, I know that there are discussions underway between the court administrator and the Supreme Court with the legislature about this because the legislature is, as we all are, concerned about the backlogs, particularly of criminal cases and specifically criminal cases in which a defendant may be being held awaiting trial. Uh, and in Franklin County, on when I left uh, at the end of March and retired, I actually left April 2nd, there were about 1,200 cases, criminal cases, awaiting uh, trial. Uh, and only a fraction of those, of course, were folks who were being held, probably uh, one third of 1%, something like that. But not very many, but still very important cases to the victims and to the defendants, certainly and to the people of the state to get those done in a, as soon as we can. 
Well, I think those delays inevitably hurt the state. I think delays in getting a case to trial is really hurtful. Yeah, uh, witnesses move, uh, their recollections fade over time. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I think that's a true statement. Uh, on the other hand, if you're waiting in jail for your trial, you probably want it to go forward as soon as you oh. can. And, uh, I know it, the Supreme Court has approved a, a number of courts around the state to begin to resume jury trials, still with social distancing and masking and those kinds of precautions. But uh, it's going to take, um, my guess is we'll be looking at the first jury trials in early May. Wow. Wow. And do you think those will be criminal cases? Yeah. Well, I, I think the Supreme Court would like to start with some civil cases to see how it's going to go. Uh, but as you know, from your years of doing this work, uh, if you put 10 civil cases on a jury list, uh, that certainly stimulates discussions about resolving the cases. If you put 10 criminal cases on the list, you may well draw four or five of those. Uh, and for my money, uh, I think the priority ought to be on the criminal cases in which a defendant's being held uh, pending trial. That's when someone's a judge has made a decision that the person shouldn't be released right. on bail. Right, and those tend to be uh, across the board the most serious cases in which there's either a life sentence penalty or there's some serious allegation of, of serious uh, interpersonal violence. Uh, those are the cases that uh, in which overwhelmingly people are awaiting trial. Wow. Yeah. Oh. What, um, are there resources that the judiciary would need to handle these cases? Or is there something more that should be available to, to, the, to the judges? Sure, I mean, uh, frankly, Vermont um, has never had what I would call an imperial judiciary. That is to say, we've never had a, uh, a surplus of funds. Uh, we have done everything on a bit of a shoestring over the last 24 years, in my opinion. And uh, we, um, so we, we've never had uh, an abundance of either staff support or judges. Uh, and frankly, right now, for example, we have what, three or four Superior Court vacancies or, or about to be three or four. Uh, I, now, when that happens in a system with only 34 judges, now suddenly you're down 10 or more percent of your workforce. That really, um, makes it more difficult for the remaining judges to keep up with the work. Add on to that, of course, uh, backlogs in all of the counties, which are probably in the hundreds uh, in terms of cases awaiting trial or being moved forward, um, you've got a real problem. So the solution to this problem isn't, um, isn't um, a mystery. You need to have the resources on the defense side, the prosecutorial side, and the judicial side to get the cases moving forward to trial. Uh, I know that there was a discussion recently, uh, I don't know how serious it was, about night court. You may remember, Ben, over the early in your tenure, another judge had suggested, let's try a night court. Mm -hmm. But um, it's like anything else. Uh, if you don't have the resources to, to do it, yeah. then it's, um, it's a waste of time. It's not going to save anything. And right now, uh, we can't ask our public defenders and our prosecutors, our court staff, uh, our judges to, to come in after their 10 or 11 hour days and work another six or eight hours to try to catch up. Uh, that's, that's not a reasonable um, approach to the problem. Well, I, 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 I can remember my days down at Chittenden where I'd, I'd come in on a weekend and spend hours getting, getting ready <laughs> for Monday. Sometimes Monday there'd be like a hundred arraignments. <laughs> you know, you spend a, you have to spend a heck of a lot of time going through the files to, so you know what you're going to be faced with when you when the when the court opens. It's it's difficult. Yeah, I mean, I remember uh, bringing home uh, boxes of work on a Friday to yeah. do on a Sunday to get ready for the following Monday, yeah. and I think many of our colleagues work that way. Now we have this new Odyssey case management system, and this at least allows you to do your weekend work online, if you will, because you can now access your files 
through the computer when, when it's working, and it seems to be working pretty well. Nevertheless, I don't think it's a good strategy for our colleagues to be uh, working on top of their 50 hours a week that they're working now during Monday through Friday. Uh, it's ultimately corrosive for you to never have a stress release and never uh, have time off where you're not working. So I'm afraid the answer, frankly, if, if the legislature asked me my opinion, it would be that you need to add more staff and you need to add more judges. You need to look at the public defense system and you need to look at the prosecutorial system, the state's attorneys. And when you, if you do that honestly, and, and if you really want to move cases in a speedy way that's fair to everyone, the victim, the public, and the defendant, you have to spend more money than we're spending now. Well, you know, that was one of my favorite expressions in Philadelphia was money talks. <laughs> money talks. Yeah. And I can't repeat the second half of that because it isn't polite, but uh, <laughs> money talks. This is a family show, right? <laughs> Very good, Howard. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, is there anything else you'd like to, to talk about now you've got this moment in, uh, in retirement to tell the world? Yeah, thank you. Well, retirement has been has proven to be a stress reliever, which is nice. You may have found that out yourself over time. And uh, I do miss the job, but most of all, I miss, miss the people that you and I were privileged to work with. Yeah. Uh, we have great staffs in all of our courts and uh, just wonderful colleagues who work really hard to, to get the work out in a timely way and a professional and concise way. And I, I miss all of them. And uh, for any of them who are watching your show, I, I can only say thank you that they, all those years, they, they made me look smart, which is tough. <laughs> oh, Howard. <laughs> so, you know, we have great law clerks, Ben. You'll remember working with a lot of them yourself. And yep. you know, we've been privileged to have really exceptional law clerks. Uh, in my view, we never had enough of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, what, those folks that we had worked very hard uh, and did, did great work for Vermonters. So uh, I miss the job. I'll, I'll be going back in May to, to sit from time to time and over the summer and through the next year, hopefully helping the Supreme Court and the and the Superior Court to get caught up on the backlog. Uh, I know other retired judges are doing the same thing and uh, we just hope we can work through this backlog in the next year, year and a half. That would, that would be a major achievement if we could, because as you know, and you remember, there's always work coming in. It's uh, oh, yeah. work didn't stop during the pandemic as Rosie Chase pointed out in her lengthy uh, interview with uh, another uh, local media outlet uh, still work coming in and we're still arraigning people what we're not doing on the other end is being able to give them a trial or uh, mm. the speedy uh, jury trial that we think they ought to have well i just i just think that uh you know the, the vermont constitution guarantees access to court and i think the circumstances now are that people are not getting access to court you know if they're being held in jail pending a trial for a year or two, and that's, that's really wrong. It's just a wrong thing. It is a wrong thing, and uh, I hope the legislature and the Supreme Court will get together and, and commit uh, additional resources to this so that at a minimum we can work through this as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is gonna take resources because a jury trial, as you know, is a very labor-intensive activity for the defendant and his team or her team, for mm -hmm. the state, the prosecution, victims advocacy uh, for the courts. There's a lot of work that goes into a jury trial, uh, mm -hmm. no matter whether it's a murder case or an assault case or a DWI. Uh, and those things don't happen uh, in a vacuum. They happen because of a lot of teamwork and a lot of uh, hard work to, to put it all together. And if you're gonna resolve a backlog of the magnitude of the one that the pandemic has created, uh, you need to, commit more, more resources across the board. One of the things I hope the legislature understands, and I think they do, is that you have to look at the criminal justice system, the, the judiciary, uh, the judicial system, civil, family, criminal, in a holistic way. You have to understand that if you plus up one part, you know, if you double the number of public defenders, 
Uh, that means you probably have to increase the number of prosecutors and victims advocates. Uh, and if you increase the number of judges, you need more defenders and you need more prosecutors. And in Vermont, uh, by the way, we probably need more infrastructure. We probably need bigger and more modern courtrooms to uh, be able to handle the load that's here now and of course to address the, the backlog, which is quite significant as you point out. No, the backlog, backlog is a real concern. It really is a concern. It really is a concern. And as you know, Ben, there's a right to a speedy trial in Vermont. And there are standards that have been established by the Supreme Court to try to protect that right and to make sure that if the lower courts uh, don't honor the right, then there are remedies to the defendant. Uh, and that's all well and good. But the pandemic has really um, stalled out the ability uh, through no fault of anyone to to give um, everyone, all of the stakeholders, a fair and speedy trial, which means that there's a real pent up demand on the part of those serious cases in which folks are being held to get them to trial. Uh, and so I hope I'll be part of that solution, but that's up to the administrative judge and the Supreme Court. But uh, it's, I guess, in a sense, up to the legislature too, in terms of. Well, I I think they give us to do this. It's up to the legend. Yeah, well, I was briefly in the legislature. I remember that. And one of the things that I that I will never forget was how few attorneys there were in the legislature. Mm -hmm. There was like three or four lawyers out of 150, whatever it was. It was just in the House. We just didn't have much uh, background. You know, didn't have didn't have it there. So it's interesting because. Uh, Attorneys understand the way that the judicial system works, the mm -hmm. legal system works. Judges are in a unique position because we have to understand how the executive branch works and also how the legislature works. But legislators aren't called upon to have the same holistic view of government that judges are forced to have. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, Ben, a, uh, a dispute can come before you or I that involves a citizen who wants to try to sue the state or wants to mm -hmm. enforce a, a right under Rule 75 that he, he or she thinks isn't being uh, honored. Mm -hmm. So judges are in a unique spot here. We're the smallest branch of government. Um, I sometimes feel like we're not, we're not as loved as we should be uh, by our <laughs> friends under the dome. Uh, but we at least because of our legal training and our experiences and the nature of our jobs and resolving disputes between and among the government and, and citizens and between two citizens and so forth, we, we have to have some understanding of how the legislature works and how the executive branch works. They don't necessarily reciprocate. Uh, every governor I've ever heard of, and I've, I've only been around 69 years, but every <laughs> governor I know of loves to appoint judges and justices. Mm -hmm. But they don't uh, necessarily spend a lot of time figuring out what judges and justices do after that. They like to appoint us and then, you know, good luck and do a good job type of thing. Okay. Well, Howard, this has been great. I'm so glad you did this. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, Ben, thanks for having me. I, uh, this is probably my first and last ever appearance on TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I hope not. Judge. I hope uh, your listeners understand that as a rule, and I think it's a good rule, Vermont judges and uh, I think any appointed judges really make an effort not to be in the spotlight, not to be making public comment on anything, uh, not to be on TV. You know, we don't have to be elected. We have to be reviewed every six years by the legislature, which is a, can be a trying experience, but it's also uh, can be a humbling and clarifying experience, as you know. <laughs> but, um, it, I think an appointed judiciary is um, a much uh, truer way to make sure that justice is, uh, is uh, done in your court system. Uh, we're not uh, looking at a billboard that says, elect Ben Joseph, uh, judge, you know, he'll put everyone in jail, that sort of thing that you get <laughs> in, in the 35 or 40 states where yeah, and that's that's a very good point. It's a very good point. Well, Howard, hopefully we'll get to do this again someday. And I would be honored 
to be interviewed by Judge Ben anytime. Uh, okay. I've been waiting for the zinger questions, but fortunately, I haven't had any yet. You z you zing them all, pal. You did a great <laughs> job. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben, for having me. Thank you, Aiden, uh, for the technical work, and uh, uh, I hope to be seeing you all again soon. Good. So long. Bye bye. <laughs>